particular the people of uh, Bulsa South. Um, but right before I, I even begin to address uh, this issue, which I think is uh, somewhat related to a matter that I want to quickly put in the public domain, mm. uh, which has to do with uh, the current uh, level of uh, hardship and despair that uh, a lot of Ghanaians uh, are facing. Um, it is only fair and proper that, you know, I let it be known that uh, we are very supportive of the upcoming uh, protests uh, titled Kumia Preko to take place on uh, July the, the 9th, beginning at the Obras Spot uh, on Tuesday, July 9th at uh, 10 a.m., I mean at uh, 6 a.m. Uh, prompt. But there's a reason why I raised this as part of my submission on the very worrisome issue that uh, you have indicated. Mental health. You see, mental health generally has been stigmatized uh, not, not globally and even in this part of our world. To compound that is the fact that research has shown that there is a relationship between extreme poverty, despair, and mental instability. Ideally, you would expect that society should always make provision to address the challenges of its most vulnerable. You know, that is why even in the holy books, be it you know, the Quran or the Bible, we are admonished to always go the extra mile to try and create an environment for those who for no reason of their own may have you know, suffered some type of defect or challenge. This, in this case, including mental health, the best help that we can. And that is why, if you look at the history of Ghana, you know, when Nkrumah made the decision to establish the uh, Pantan, you know, mental uh, health facility, it was supposed to be a facility that had the capacity not only to house those brothers and sisters who may be having challenges mentally, but also to serve as a training school, not only for Ghana, but for the entire West African mm. sub-region. The idea was that that would have been replicated, not just to bring them in and help resolve the, the challenge, but also to give them some place that they, ca they can be safe and secure until perhaps you know, medication and other therapies are able to help them to recover. We haven't done well as a nation in terms of providing the needed facilities and the resources and the funding mm. to address mental health service delivery. It's a fact. And so given that we have fallen short in this regard and given the stigma and given the many potential causes of mental instability which are present with us, of course, we can list things like drug abuse, alcoholism, but stress, anxiety, mm. extreme poverty can all lead to a mental imbalance. We have not done well. And I believe that because of the stigma and because we don't even have the needed facilities and the expertise to address this problem, and because we have not made the funding available, because we don't have the facilities, there are many people who should be getting help because anyone can be a victim of mental instability. Mm. I mean, I had the opportunity to do a statement on the floor of parliament on this same matter. And I know my friends, my colleagues viewing would bear me out. Where I drew attention to the lack of attention, the lack of resources, the lack of expertise in the area of mental health care delivery. As I speak to you now, if you were to drive as I do from Accra to Fumbisi, the number of mental Persons that I would deem to be people suffering mm. from mental imbalance is astonishing. Just a few days ago, there was a story that Kumasi had, had been overtaken by mental health patients. I was coming from a workshop in Koforodia over the weekend, and I saw at least two persons stuck naked walking in the middle of the road. It's very clear that we have a problem. And if we don't begin to address it, it is going to become a crisis because these very unfortunate incidents, I mean, who in their right mind, right, mm. would stab your pregnant wife to death? Who in their right mind would try to slaughter your own son? And because your daughter reacted, you go on to, to kill her. 
And because your wife reacted, you go on to kill your wife as well. So it's, it's very unfortunate. It's very disheartening. But the conditions precipitating and promoting this type of unacceptable behavior mm. are rife. So these victims aren't getting the help. That is, that is it. Even those who the signals and the signs indicate much more obviously that they have mental health challenges. How well have we done? Those on our streets. Yes, how well have we done? And I remember very well, you know, when uh, we were celebrating Ghana 60, I, I remember very well, I think it was uh, one of the deputy chiefs of staff, uh, Abu Jinapo, that the mental health facility was going to be built. I don't know whether you remember. I am wondering what has happened to that. Well, when I heard that, I, I, I thought that at least it would reduce the pressure on those facilities that we have. Because if not, uh, 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 the one we have here in Accra Psychiatric Hospital, Pantan, and I believe uh, Ankafur in uh, the central region, which other mental health facility do we have in this country? The whole of the northern sector of this country. Not even one. Are we being fair? Do we think that someday we may not need mental health care assistance? Any of us, and I said this on the floor of the house, I said, Mr. Speaker, any of us in this chamber can be a victim of mental instability. The line is very thin. The stress, the anxiety, the pressure, the hardship, you can just go off like that. And where do you go for assistance? It doesn't have to be allowed to degenerate. So Pantai, Anka Fol, and then the one uh, in Accra. Yes, Apart these are the that. three mental health institutions that we have in this country. And <laughs> look at our population. I mean, give or take, if we were to do a census today, I think the general uh, guess is that we'll be around 30 million. Mm. And we have only three. And yet mental health is a situation that any of us can fall victim of. And sometimes it is difficult to even be able to tell by looking at you to make a decision mm. about your mental state. We, and that is why it is most dangerous that we don't have the right architecture and the resources and attention being paid to we, an area that we are all potential victims of. We passed the mental health uh, authority law hoping or expecting that it will help improve or focus attention on the sector. Then we can conclude today that it has not helped. Well, the, the, the act has been passed, mm. and I raised that issue. Other colleagues have raised it. Mm. I know if you were to speak to uh, uh, Dr. Osei, I think it's Osei. The, Dr. Uh, Osei. Osei. The chief. Uh, uh, yes, the, uh, the, the, the CEO of the... Of the, of the yes, exactly. I think what it means now is for the LI to be passed, you know, the legislative instrument. The act has been passed, but you usually need an LI. To make it operational. To guide its implementation and its operationalization. And that is where we are. So why, I think why that the delay? Is, is there a reason why there's that delay? Well, I haven't made the inquiries, but I, I believe that it is time to look at it. And whatever the case may be, the sector minister, I mean, this will fall under the, the, the ambit of because the minister for, for that health. It is that that will bring in the resources needed certainly, to, to, to run up. Certainly. So what are we waiting for? I mean, I'm not on a health committee, but I, I think that it is time to take it up. I mean, I, I am working with uh, another colleague in Parliament for us to become advocates on, on, this, on this issue mm. in, in the House. And we have intentions of engaging, you know, the, the CEO so that we can raise more, bring more attention to this issue and advocate for the need for us to move. Mm. Because we are all potential victims. And it is not right that we are just sitting by and we are allowing, you know, matters to degenerate for this type of horrific stories to come to the public domain. Grateful. Let's turn to the d daily uh, graphic this morning. Uh, uh, we'll quickly, uh, let me welcome my second guest, uh, was I tell you more about the story that is on your screens there. Uh, mental health, uh, not getting that particular attention. A lot of stories about husbands killing wives. Uh, that is killing children, uh, worrying to uh, a state. And that's what we've been talking about this morning. Whilst I wait to welcome my second guest, he's MP for Ifutu, a member of the NPP. 
Honorable Alexander Fiumarkin. Good morning. One, sir. I hope uh, you're great. How about Grace? We can't complain. All right. Grateful for your time with us. Good morning, sir. My in-law. Let me oh, give you just okay. a few minutes to... He's my in-law, by the way. Yeah, your in-law. Yeah, he is. Okay. But I, that's the beauty I, of Ghana. I, I don't want to go into <laughs> That's the beauty of Ghana. <laughs> I don't want to go into <laughs> But uh, uh, I don't want to be marking. Uh, the, 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 the publisher is reporting this morning. A uh, dad, uh, kill, dad kills wife, child. If you take a look at the Guardian Times, the husband is said to have killed uh, the wife uh, the, the, and the son. The concerns are that perhaps these persons need some psychiatric help, but they are not getting it. And that could have been the result of some of these things. Possibility. Mm. Then also, I think, uh, of our marital problems, disagreements, uh, they vary. Um, sometimes lack of proper counseling uh, can lead to people acting overly emotional. Uh, you, can, you can get angry in a situation that perhaps without somebody properly counseling you and engaging you, you end up doing uh, the unthinkable. So I think um, our family heads, um, churches, must uh, take uh, interest in, 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 in the marriages of uh, uh, members so that um, some of these things they could intervene as early as possible mm. through counseling and uh, ensure that the matters are settled. Uh, if you come to issues of whether or not uh, these are, do not have psychiatric um, challenges, relation that maybe the person has a mental problem and has not uh, sought uh, psychiatric attention, uh, care from a mental hospital, and then they end up attacking their wives. Well, like I said initially, a possibility. So if we want to seriously uh, look at mental health, mm. the last time I had the opportunity of listening to one expert in that field, he said, well, every human being suffers some uh, mental uh, you know, problem in one way or the other. Mm. It depends on the, uh, on, on how the person may respond to it or otherwise, because sometimes even the stress of work, you know, you can get angry for nothing. That in itself has some challenge in there. But uh, the, the problem is that even when you have, you find yourself in such a situation, or even family members taking you to the hospital is another problem. Mm. They wouldn't want to, they may think it's a spiritual thing, they have to pray for you and all that. Yes, let's come to the, 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 the mental health situation in Ghana. I mean, our hospitals who have the responsibility to counsel us, treat us and all that, whether they have the needed resources. Well, the concerns have been that they don't have enough. Mm. So it means that uh, government may have to look at that uh, direction and give to get more uh, to, to, to them, to enable them to uh, uh, deliver on their mandate. So I think if that is the call mm. on government to increase its support uh, for that sector within the health uh, uh, sector, fine. I, I'm, I'm all for it. I mm. mean, it has to be, you know, it has to be done. But uh, of course, uh, limited resources uh, for competing Interest. demands. Uh, you know, uh, you have to fix the footbridge at uh, Medina. There's pressure on you, Abosokan. You have to do asphalt. Mm. In a you have to send water to Bursa South. Uh, very well, that is true. <laughs> he, he, he said it over and over again. But the good news for you is that, uh, Madam Minister for uh, uh, Special water, initiatives. no, no, water, mm. water resources and sanitation mm. has secured funds for this small yeah, yeah, town. We approved, what, we approved that. Uh, which which benefited Friday. you? Which benefited we, your we, community? They approved it. Of yes, I'm saying that which benefited your community. Bursa South is part of Ghana. Yes, I know, and I'm saying that which benefited your community. So which benefited least, Ghana? Yes. Oh come on! <laughs> but at <laughs> least the good news is that <laughs> the good news is that 
The government wasn't discriminatory. Mm. The government didn't say this is opposition stronghold, this is MPP stronghold. Areas that needed to be uh, addressed were addressed. So uh, at least uh, it is being done. But like I said, mm. whilst you are solving one problem, another area has a challenge. That's right. And you have to look at it. So mental health uh, requires... So an area we need to We would have to, we have to look okay. at it, and I'm sure government will look at it. Okay. No, but right. Just, just uh, before you know, we allow this topic to, to rest, uh, I would still like to know the state of the, uh, the earlier decision to construct another mental health facility, mm. as was uh, narrated to be a positive byproduct of the Ghana 60 celebration. It will be good to know whether the idea is so uh, active and alive. Okay, question. grateful. This, this was, a, you a, get a, that er, er, this was made answer. by the deputy, minister, uh, deputy chief of staff. So uh, perhaps I'll file it to the, okay. the, the, the leader let of me, government business in the house. Uh, let me go to the BNFT and speak to matters arising from your house before we go to the issue of uh, the president assuring that uh, the continent... Um, should have its rightful place. Now, BNFT says that they proposed 450 chamber block for Ghana's okay. parliament. It's expected to be mm. ready by 2022. Okay. That's approximately 36 months. Uh, the lead architect for the project, okay. say David yeah. Frank Ajayi, indicated work on the project will yeah. most likely start with sometime this year. We're hoping the project will sometime this year start on site. Parliament, government has committed to it in the budget that was revealed, has already happened, and they are seeking additional funding. But we have been given the direction to prepare, uh, starting sometime this year, to be able to allow this to go on site. If we're able to start this year, it should be completed within the next three years. Uh, uh, Professor Michael Kwe received uh, the design uh, from uh, the company that is expected to construct the facility. Uh, Mr. David, Sir David Ajayi uh, is a Ghanaian based in UK, explained the reason behind the design. Now, um, though he did not put a timeline on the cost for commencement of the project, he pointed out that it will be decided soon. Um, uh, he also confirmed that the president will be present to cut the sword for the project when the date is affirmed. Uh, the worry, however, is that the cost of the project, according to the Speaker of Parliament, is unknown. But a company has been uh, uh, chosen to start to commence work on the project. On a more part, let me start a conversation with you. A new chamber for Parliament, <coughs> MPs have said it is necessary. Uh, yesterday, the speaker, or, or last Friday, the Speaker of Parliament said that the cost is unknown, what Parliament has isn't enough, and they will need to find extra funding. Well, we, right. Mm. Um, this, this has been in the uh, work, works for some time, mm. as far as uh, the seventh uh, Parliament is, uh, is concerned. I think my colleague here would agree with me. Right. That the conversation has been uh, ongoing. Um, even if you were to visit the precincts of uh, Parliament now, you will notice that there is some uh, work being done uh, to augment at least uh, what is popularly known as uh, Job 600. Mm. Uh, and I think that uh, came about because of the lack of space for all the 275 uh, members of parliament. I know that some of our colleagues don't have space uh, in, the, in, that, in that building. Uh, you must remember that when uh, the building was constructed, Ghana's overall population wasn't this big, and certainly the persons that uh, were selected by the people to represent them were not 275. Uh, that is understandable. Uh, but the argument has also been made that the current uh, chamber was not originally uh, designed to serve that purpose. But of course, it became necessary to customize it, and uh, to put it to use the way uh, it is being uh, utilized uh, now. Uh, and I think it is these uh, factors that perhaps have informed the, the leadership of parliament to initiate this. But you have asked a legitimate question. Um, is it necessary at this time to have a 450 uh, chamber member, or a member a chamber for members of parliament? Mm. Is it that we are anticipating that the number of, uh, of constituencies uh, will be increased in the medium to short term beyond the current 200 and uh, 75? 
or is it that the, the nature of the design and, and the way it's to be uh, will cater for uh, other purposes, including perhaps a much more uh, bigger and presentable gallery with a few more amenities uh, within uh, that structure uh, itself. But what worries me is not the idea of doing it, but I think it is the issue of uh, the cost, where we are not currently certain mm -hmm. about how much it is going to cost, as you said. You said the speaker in receiving the design uh, was not certain about how much it was going to cost. And that indications were made that there perhaps could be the need to look at other sources of avenues to mobilize resources towards the execution of this, of this project. Mm. Uh, so I think it will be important that we know the details about how much it's going to cost, particularly so since we are the, the representatives of the people. You know, anything to do with us should be done in a way that will be transparent for the people to understand that there is indeed justification and to know how much of the resources are going to go towards uh, this, this facility. Uh, so we wait to see. Um, I think the process has begun. Uh, we will be following uh, the, the evolution of uh, this initiative. And uh, where, where we have to comment, we will comment. But I think uh, at this point, there isn't much to say other than to seek to know more details about, about the, the, the funding, the, the, the funding aspects of it. I'm, I'm grateful. All of you, Martin, so uh, the, the new chamber uh, funding becoming an issue, what do we do? Per the story. Well, per the story and per what my brother has said, mm. at this point, there's nothing much to say. Let's move on to Daily Graphic this morning. Let me take a look at page, uh, uh, right, page uh, 16. And um, the Ghana Bar Association has expressed worry over the increasing levels of insecurity in the country and called for a national consensus on security issues and for more logistics to be made available to the law enforcement agencies to ensure social, societal uh, safety. Perhaps it is time to drastically change our attitude towards security as a whole. It is obviously time to reassess the proverbial Ghanaian hospitality and to be extremely vigilant and be one another skipper. The president of the GBA, uh, Ms. Anthony Force Engineer, said in Accra. Now, uh, that was at the 37th anniversary of the remembrance service for the three high court judges who were abducted and murdered in 1982. Now, Ghana in recent years has equally witnessed some activities which have threatened and questioned the general safety of the country. Crimes such as armed robbery and kidnapping have been rampant in the past few years. These activities lay bare the huge lapses in our security as a country, he said. Um, so uh, that's the story. The president, if you read the front page of the Daily Graphic, uh, has urged Africans to refrain from activities that lead to civil strife. He said for the continent to take its rightful place in global affairs, it had to shed its image of instability and wars, and rather prioritize the establishment of a peaceful environment. Let's link the two stories. Um, what it time for national consensus on security? That's according to the GBA. Yeah, well, it's a call that we must all uh, embrace. I agree. Uh, when I saw the national chief imam mm. at Christ the King Church, I was a happy man. Why? Because um, he demonstrated his tolerance for the Christian faith as a Muslim. When I again saw uh, His Grace Bish, uh, B, uh, Cardinal Tex, uh, uh, Palmer Buckle, mm. uh, in a handshake, uh, with the chief imam at breakfast on his 100th uh, uh, birthday uh, celebration, I was also happy. Why? Because the man has demonstrated that as a Catholic, mm. a Christian, he tolerates the Islamic faith, and that followers of both religions should uh, live in peace. So that is one step. But you see, the, the, this is not a coordinated uh, effort. It is their own initiative to prove to the world, to Ghanaians, that look, we will tolerate each other. Now, on the broader call, yes, we need to 
already we do it, but perhaps the way we do it, you know, intertribal tolerance is key. Political tolerance. I told some party full soldiers that do they know that over 15 years, my business partner, the one I did business with, we have equal shares in the business. He was a dyed in the wool NDC. Uh, he is a dyed in the wool NDC. Mm. And I'm an MPP. I recall 2007, 8. He would say that, oh, I'm going to support Professor Mills. We'll make money. He say, oh, me, me, I spin test road. Day, then we'll laugh over it and all that. We should appreciate the fact that living in peace okay, will help our development. Therefore, all manner of intolerance, even the way we, we present issues in the media, getting so emotional, attacking each other and all that, you may be doing that after the, leaving the studios, you, you shake hands, but the food soldiers down there, it's a problem. Um, we must also not, because we are in opposition, creates negative impression about our country. It shouldn't be the case. Last week, you see what a, a Nigerian a, a banker said of Ghana. I'm not sure some of us as Ghanaians will be that bold in saying this about our country, the gains we have made. If we're talking about insecurity, all these things mm. add up to it. If you, if you go and stand somewhere and create the impression that I do, they are stealing. They are doing this. Oh, nothing is going on. Just maybe, for instance, you want to do politics. There will be effects. So let us get to a point where we would have the development of this country at heart, whether in opposition, in government, whether you are a pastor, you are a, an imam, you are a traditional ruler, you are... Uh, a priest, you know, having your own small shrine somewhere. Your utterances, your utterances, the way we, 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 we make pronouncement. For instance, uh, last week I watched a video. Um, a respected man of God I know, uh, Prophet Kobe, and his utterances in church. You, you, you shouldn't have mentioned this. Very well. No, no, no. We're discussing um, the, his utterances. I mean, I felt that, look, man of God, you went to the extreme. Sometimes Obutu Bimpa will speak, and I say, mm, this one, it's gone to the extreme. But sometimes, because maybe it may benefit you in one way or the other, you may not see anything wrong with it. The bottom line is that we have one Ghana. Whether you are an Ifutu man, an Nzema man, uh, a Norman, a Ghan, an Achim or Ashanti, it is one Ghana. Let us continue to tolerate each other. If there is insecurity, you cannot move. You can't go about your business. If you are a student, you can't go to school and study. And then our co cooperation with the police. Look, mm. sometimes at midnight, you see the police standing by the roadside, sometimes going to Winneba. You find police all over. They're sacrificing for the country. All right? That's your job. They may not be... Pardon? That's your job. Their job, yes. But I'm saying that they're sacrificing. They can choose not to... <laughs> do it. You can assign him and he decides to go and sleep. But I'm saying that the fact that the person is vigilant, vigilant on duty mm. is sufficient proof that he is sacrificing. We need to cooperate with them. If we don't cooperate with the police, how would, how would they ensure security? So, as for me, I would want to associate uh, myself with the statement by Mr. President Mm. Uh, the, the, the bar president, uh, my own uh, senior and colleague, uh, um, Tony, and urge all of us to be uh, law abiding. Uh, let's respect the rule of law, especially those of us, uh, the elite, mm. so that uh, the ordinary Ghanaian who is not as enlightened as the elite may have been will uh, uh, learn something and also act in that uh, manner. I was also happy recently when the issue of 
uh, the Nigerian thing was coming up, immediately Ghanaians, you know, stood up and said, no, if we are not careful, you know, we'll destroy the brotherly relationship between us and Nigerians. Let's deal with the issue. If somebody has committed a crime, he's committed a crime. Don't let us create this xenophobic impression. Nigerians, Nigerians, Nigerians. It, it's not too good. Recently, the kidnapping uh, of Canadians. It wasn't Nigerian. It was Ghanaian. They were arrested. All right? So if we are dealing with a crime, let's settle on it and deal with it. And not create any attitude of intolerance. The issue of Chinese, and they be talking in Chinese, and Chinese the ambassador came and told us that we they don't know where our gold is. So our <laughs> relationship, so. our relationship, but, but they knew Ghana. That's why they came. Uh, so. Yes, but they, they don't know where your gold is. You, Same thing you the Ghanaian, <laughs> you. Uh, Same this thing one, I'll one. say it bloodly. They couldn't it have is, known it is the Ghana man who goes to register general to register business and say it's my business, <laughs> and then you make the one who is bringing his money your employee. I totally agree. You I make him your employee. You then you, in the, the forest, the you take them to the chiefs. Uh -huh. tree. You take them to the chiefs. You cut down our cocoa trees. But they had the gold in China. That's why they brought it. Yes, but they don't know where the gold is. Yeah, yeah but they had it before. This. Yes, but they but they also have gold. Somebody brought them. They have gold. They know <laughs> where see. their gold is, but they are they are not. Uh, they are not uh, doing galamsey there, okay. but they are coming here. Let me they let don't. me let me let me take us back to this. You see. Now, how should government take this, particularly on the backdrop that there is a back and forth about whether there is a security issue in the country? How should government take the call from GBU? Some have even suggested that the president should address the country on I'm one of them. Insecurity. I have made the call. Look, um, right, in all sincerity, mm -hmm. in all fairness, we shouldn't present the case as though there is insecurity in Ghana. With the, all due respect, let me, make says so. no, no, let me make my point. Mm. It is okay to express concerns about the security situation and call on stakeholders, the security agencies, to step up. You see, if you say there is insecurity, what exactly do you mean? This man does not have a policeman. Mm. I don't have a policeman either. I drive to office, I drive back home at midnight, people all over in Accra, all right? People enjoy life to 2, 3 a.m., Thursdays, Fridays, Saturday. You see cars parked all over. <laughs> I mean, so don't let us create that impression that... Ca cars parked in what? Oh, having fun. I mean, why? There's, there's, okay. You must have life after work. Why? Okay. I'm saying that people enjoy weekend. Okay. Okay? <laughs> All over in the city. Okay. Kumasi, Tamale, how many times do we hear of such incident? Although people at six, they get back home and the town is dead in our villages. So I am saying that in as much as we have issues with robbery, mm. kidnapping, somebody you know, uh, attacking somebody for political reasons, I would don't want to say they are isolated. Because even if it is one, it is an issue. Right. Even if it is one, it's an issue. So if we want to add our voice to it, the call, that look, security agencies, step up. Look, um, let me cite an example that I can speak to it properly. In Winneba, lecturers were complaining. Students were complaining, you know, uh, theft situation, robbery, and all that. We engaged the police. Say, said, look, what can you do? They said they need more streetlights. They needed the cooperation of the public. So the police commander came on radio. And soon thereafter, the cooperation, you know, the informants were also worried that, look, we may give information and people, the, the police may expose us and all that. Last week, the police commander, I mean, I, I, I don't have the figure, mm. but he said, look, honorable, if you compare the crime rate in Efutu from 2006 all the way to 2019, the figures have dropped drastically, all because of efforts being made. If you go to Winneba, I mean, I don't have police. I don't think people have police. They go about their business. Taxi drivers, Work at night, all the at dawn, 
drivers, you know, carry traders to Bankesim, Accra, Akim Oda, and all that. I am saying that much as we would have situations where somebody, uh, some armed robbers may attack uh, 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 a passenger vehicle mm. at one point, at gunpoint, somebody may be attacked and killed. We shouldn't use that to say that. There's, there's general insecurity. General insecurity. So I perhaps think, the, 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 the GBA might not uh, perhaps be I don't think I, I, no, I, I don't think. Or perhaps I, I don't think, think uh, that. Because if, for instance, if the police says that uh, there was 1,772 robbery cases in 2017 compared to uh, this, uh, I think, 1,900 in 2018, uh, that is what the, the GBA might be uh, interpreting as high levels of crime. Well, I don't Could think, rapper, I don't, I don't think Mr. Tony Forsen said there's a general insecurity in Ghana. Okay. I think he that... Was, he was once speaking, a daily graphic says, he says, over increasing, he says, increasing levels of insecurity. That's what he says. So I'm saying that it's how we express it. Okay. Whatever it is, Right. We must continuously improve on our security situation. In the US, in the UK, I mean in all these advanced democracies, we hear of security situations like this. People attack in church. Okay. 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 In okay. synagogues. Yeah, some, in, in, I'll come in back New Zealand. To I'll come but back to I'm saying that in all of this, it is important for our security agencies to step up. Okay. The effort. That is all. Uh, okay. like we shouldn't create the impression that there is, there is a general okay. insecurity that is out of hand. Doctor, and I think that is where right. my colleague, even I, in, I am, in, in minority, uh, in opposition, must be measured in, in what is he his approach. Let me draw his attention. Let me draw your attention. Let me draw your attention. On our part, let me draw your attention to this. The GBA is acknowledging that. Insecurity was not limited to only Ghana, as the world was witnessing an increase in major criminal activities, including terrorism, which had compelled countries such as the U.S. and France to tighten their security through increasing budget allocations and creating awareness of the situation among their public. So, if, if they are saying so, it is not only limited to Ghana. That's what the GBA is saying. Yes, yes. I, I think I, I agree with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is... Uh, an honest, fair assessment, and, it, and it's, 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 it's self-evident that uh, when we speak about uh, security challenges, obviously, we can't say that security challenges are only confined to Ghana or, for that matter, uh, Africa. Uh, every human society uh, would always deal with one security challenge or the other. Uh, I, I believe it only becomes an issue when the levels begin to affect, you know, productivity and, and affect the ability of citizens to go about their day-to-day -day activities uh, in order to improve themselves, their families, and, and to serve their nation. And, and so I think that the call is in the right direction. As I said earlier, uh, I have been one of those who has been calling on the Commander-in-Chief, the, the President, to address the nation on, on security measures, I mean matters, and to, and to state what is being done to address some of these issues. I mean, we can say that, yes, we are not like uh, you know, uh, a Libya where portions of that country are being overrun by different, you know, war infections, or we are not like a Somalia. But the truth is that we, we have witnessed some very harrowing incidents that should cause us to sit up and to worry and, and to call for the entities who have the responsibility of ensuring that, you know, those anxieties uh, are not with us. Do the needful and what they are being paid to do. Look, right, let, let's face it. Uh, it is not just the issue of, of the kidnappings, but you are also aware that uh, we had uh, situations in the, uh, the Numba area. We had Chirponi uh, not, not long ago. And, and we've also seen uh, uh, matters to do with, 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 with you know, uh, eruption of uh, disorder as a result of polit political contestation. And all of these are matters that have implications. So we shouldn't run away from the fact that, you know, the, the situation, it doesn't seem to be going down. Uh, and the, the, the GBA is very because right in this, Dabon, in this, in this, in this assessment. That was resolved must yes, be, yes. Must I mean, we are resolving some. We are resolving some. But ideally, we would all want that 
we should not experience uh, these kinds of uh, security breaches that will give us room uh, to worry. But right, you see, I want to segue into the president's own comments when he spoke about the need for us to do what is necessary to reduce civil strife. I believe that was the quote that you made in terms of the president's uh, delivery. Right. There are a lot of reasons that can generate or create civil strife. One, segments of, of a population, segments of society, feel that they are not being heard, they are being oppressed, they are not being treated fairly, or that the, the, the system of justice delivery is skewed against them, or that entities are not going to give them fair hearing. Then the tendency for them to rise up, to try and push back on what they think is oppression, is always very high. And in particular, uh, I was happy that you mentioned that the president made references, and I had this in other reviews as well, about electoral systems mm. and how matters to do with elections can serve as, if you like, a foundation for the disruption of social order. And that is why it is important that our Electoral Commission continues to engage all stakeholders as we move ahead in trying to consolidate our democracy. Because when groups begin to feel that the system or the caste are stuck up against them, or that the person who is supposed to be the independent referee is actually tilting or leaning against one side of the contestants, clearly. And if they feel that they have no other room to seek recourse, then they will have to adopt legitimate democratic means of making their voices held. And this can include demonstrations, in addition to perhaps even going to court to seek redress. And I think that we can also discuss this within the context of what is going on to do with the limited registration. And you know, there have been some altercations to do with the limited registration. And we believe that if the, if, if, if the original argument that we had made, which was to decentralize the process, had been agreed upon by the Electoral Commission, perhaps some of these flashes that we are seeing may not have come into being. So I agree with the President that electoral processes and elections, in as far as our continent is concerned, tend to serve as a foundation for the implosion of society. If and when people feel that it is not being fairly managed and that they are not being given a fair opportunity. So I agree with the president on, the, on that score. Okay. And I also agree with the GBA that there is a need for us to take a critical look at our security. And I've always said, and I, I know Afenio is perhaps going to accuse me of being political, but I have said that if you look at the security architecture of this country, you know, down the historical lane, this is the most robust in terms of the personnel who are handling the portfolio. I mean, we have the National Security Minister, National Security Advisor, National Security Minister at the Office of the President. We have the Minister for Defense, Minister for Interior, the BNI boss, the CID. And then you have regional security coordinators. So ideally, if we have this many people handling the security portfolio, we should not be seeing some of these things. Okay. Let well, me take some comments. Another thing, I'll come back to you briefly. Okay, sure. I should do the wrap-up. Right. Aisha, come on once right. again. Hello, Bright. Good morning again. Now, let's just go through some of the messages that we have received this morning. The very first one is coming from Charles Nyame from Asaman Kesi, and he says, despite several warnings from experts, it seems we're not paying much attention to mental health as a concerned nation. Let's not forget that with current unprecedented economic hardships and high cost of living, mostly resulting in stress, anxiety, and pressure, it is only expected that mental instability with its attendant effects would be on the rise. Condolences to the families of the deceased mother and children. Uh, good morning, Bright. Mental health care must be regarded as part of a normal health care delivery instead of making it a specialized health care. Dr. Kwesiose once said, every Ghanaian potentially has a mental health problem in one way 
or the other. I think successive governments must make deliberate investment into mental health care delivery. This is coming from Aki from Efia Constituency. Uh, this one is also coming from Dr. Abedi from Kwadaso, and he says that, thank God Mr. President Akufuado has assured no job losses at Ghana Sports and kudos to the government for approving over 1.5 billion Ghana cities for 17 road projects. That's what he says. And this one also says, good morning, TV3. Please ask the MPP man that when uh, did they realize we're all Ghanaians, uh, when the NDC was in power, what did they say about the government then? Please, he should give us a break. Ismaila sent that one to us, and he says he's the Greater Accra Regional Zongo Caucus Coordinator for the NDC. Thank you very much, Bright. You always okay. know where they are. Uh, okay. A quick right. one. Then we'll go so, to... So, uh, <coughs> um, Dr. Park introduced the, the concerns of his party in respect of the EC limited registration. Well, I don't know what is happening in his constituency, but I think that... In a uh, what the EC is doing mm. is that apart from its district office, it has also uh, sent out other centers. Yes, uh, it gadget to some other alone. So. Ah, good. So, to me, in all fairness, to me, I agreed with them. I, re I remember right here on this platform, I agreed with the position in NDC too that look, limiting. The registration, all right. So, do you remember that? I, I do. Yes, they're limiting it only mm. to their offices. Look, it would bring some hardship. People would have to incur so much cost. So, practically, what they are doing, we should cooperate, because um, if if people are going through some difficulty, it doesn't affect only you alone. We all go through that because they would you would have to mobilize as as politicians. We have to organize them, encourage them especially our constituents who are outside the constituency for work or some other reasons, you need to encourage them to come back home and register and all that. So I think that uh, we shouldn't create the impression that the electoral commission is doing the registration only in its offices. Mm. Certainly not. That, that is not the impression. Yes, so, no, no, no. Even in my constituency, uh -huh. you have narrated. So there's an improvement. Things. There's yeah. an improvement. It's certainly so. On what they had earlier announced. That means that <coughs> instead of doing strictly what they had announced, they have now seen the need. They have modified it uh, to some extent. Uh, and it has happened. You know, so at least when they say it, okay. so right this morning, at least Dr. Park is commanding easy. Mm. No, I, 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 they, to, they, they have, they have modified it. But sure. the, our argument was that this should have been the normal exception. Yeah, but you also recall that in all the eight years of the previous uh, exercise they did not decentralize the limited registration that is where some people think that you are acting in bad faith <laughs> that suddenly you are in opposition you are changing your position because i remember when i was championing this decentralization your people said they were okay okay they were okay i'm grateful they said